Hi everyone, I'm Jeff, and I lead the knowledge of Oxy team here at NDPC. So uh, basically we oversee the, the two biggest uh, giving landscape studies in Singapore, uh, namely the individual giving survey and the corporate giving survey. So today I thought I'd share some interesting insights about the Singapore giver uh, from the life stage perspective. So before we get into that, let's just take a macro overview of Singapore. So Singapore is, is a state in flux. What do I mean by this? We all know about these. Look at the Kalashi right now. We are part of a multiculturalism, a multiracialism. We are part of our skyline, the MBS. We have our flats, our Asian flats. I mean, Singapore really has something to be proud of because, like, 90% of all house, all people that actually have their own homes. And, you know, of course, part of our Hawk Center. Who's been part of our food, our affordable Hawk Centers everywhere? As well as the Changi Airport, right? And the Jewel is going to open up next year. Now, at the same time, uh, on the reverse side, Singapore is, like, Singapore is actually in the flat as well. And what do I mean by this? So in this collage here, you'll see as well that right now the divide is not so much between races, it's actually between locals and foreigners. There's some kind of tension there. And of course, in the right picture, the MRT situation. Um, I'll leave you to draw your conclusions on that. <laughs> uh, we have cars as well, the uh, most expensive cars in the world. Uh, we have the new GST increases. So I think this is right to be full every second of all this. As well as the uh, <laughs> so as well as the aging population uh, in, in Singapore. So approximately about one in four will be sixty-five uh, by twenty thirty. Right. So uh, despite these uncertain times, people in Singapore still do give. Uh, still do give, and they have a heart. Basically. So for example, the picture here you see on the left side. Uh, this is actually from the Hayes situation, uh, two, two years back, or it's recent year. We have brought new volunteers from the new corp actually distributing masks to the low-income houses and Asian events. As well as on the right side is basically the passing of LPY, when he passed away. And we saw a, a mass pouring of grief, uh, and people really came out and shared to help others uh, who were actually paying respects to him. You know, so they were you know, umbrellas, they were drinks, they were food. They all really have in the process, in the spirit of giving. So it's these national movements that actually do galvanize the whole population to give, and it brings out the best of us. So looking at the volunteerism rate right now, uh, what we see is that the latest wave of IGS 2016 has actually gone up quite steadily to 35%, uh, and it's grown over the years, you can see. And the total volunteer hours actually counts to right now about 121 million hours. That's actually a double, almost a double increase from 66 million hours in the last week. Similarly, in terms of donation, the amount actually has doubled, and despite a slight decline in donation rate. So you see now donations in about 76%, and the amount is right now about 2.17 billion compared to 1.246 billion in the previous week. So, however, let's look at the life stages, right? So you see here the trend line, the blue line basically represents donation line. So donation actually in Singapore is still pretty uh, common, and it's actually the easiest way of giving right now. So across all life stages, donation is the easiest form of giving. However, if you look at the line below, the orange line, what you see is very interesting, right? So the volunteer rate actually does dip. So at the very beginning, when you're 15, 24, uh, the passion is really there, right? So people want to volunteer, they're all fired up. But the moment you enter the workforce in 25 to 34, that's where actually things start to decline. And that's where other priorities take place. And somehow, for some reason, when you're in your 35 to 54, in your midlife, you start to have this resurgence of wanting to give back, right? And currently, for the older cohort, which is 55 and above, uh, we do see a, a drop in volunteer rate. So it's only about, right now, about one in five seniors actually do volunteer. So that's the purpose of my presentation today. It's really to give you take it through a journey, to give us a journey. Uh, and, and for better understanding, we're actually classified three life stage segments. The first one is youth, uh, midlifers, and seniors. And the age range there is basically uh, what we use in the official um, demographics here in Singapore. So before we look at that as givers, let's see how they are as people first, right? So I think we always talk about advocating giving, but I think it's a very important first one. So what is it going to people's lives, right? So taking this human desires framework from this renowned social researcher called Hugh McKay, uh, he's an Australian social researcher. So we basically gathered his human desires framework in Singapore in our quarterly uh, tracker, which is sponsored very kindly by Tuguna. 
And we basically tested the same designs across all the different live agents, synthesized about 2,000 plus. So we're just thinking here, what you notice is that for use, for example, they have a little fire that the passion like to about. So they're all about you know, external validation, recognition, seeking meaning, self-awareness, love, companionship, success, power, influence, right? control of own destiny, and seeking challenges. These are all very typical of the youth right now uh, in Singapore. However, as you go down the different the life stages, uh, what we notice is a dwindling of desires, right? So if you go down, down all the way to the seniors on the other end there, you'll notice that actually it's more towards that, which is reverse action. It's uh, internal acceptance, right? Internal acceptance and resignation of the faith. It's diminishing social connections, it's deprioritization of success, wealth, and influence, the less need for control, they share the opportunity and really risks and challenges. On the flip side, they actually are turning to be more religious uh, and they're willing to sacrifice for that as well. So this is kind of the human desires across uh, the life stages right now, an overview in Singapore. So how do we in the here see a giving journey? Right? So it's basically falls into three buckets. The first is really your potential giver, and then giver and multiplier. And today when you exit the auditorium on the right side there, you probably see three video booths of these three uh, profiles. And then I've actually interviewed uh, these respondents, uh, individuals and corporates in Singapore, and they actually interviews a capture of those video booths, so do have a look at it. So essentially for uh, potential givers, uh, what we're noticing is that there's a first awareness of giving, right? So this could be when, for example, yeah. they read an article online about giving, or when you see a friend posting a picture of altruism, and they kind of like, you know, have this first awareness of giving. Then follows the mindset shift, and they start having some growing activity towards the beneficiary of the cause that they, they, they've been passionate about. Then comes the first opportunity to act on it, right? So this is where schools and companies can play a part. And from giver, well, our message to them is like, you know, don't just stop at one time giving, right? Because you know, like, we give you guys for example, every year we bring November December, the donation rates always go up. Like, it's always kind of, yeah, why? Because it's tax season, right? So everyone wants to have tax relief and they start giving in November December. So, why? So, I'll actually focus uh, our message to them is like, don't just make a transaction, make it, make it a relational giving and have an adoptive focus that lasts throughout the whole year, right? Uh, and finally, what you want to do ultimately, especially in this context like this, is really make givers of yourself to become multipliers. Right? So don't, do, don't go about doing it in silos, you can work together, collaborate together to make a greater impact. Right? Because one plus one equals a three ultimately. Yeah. So how do we encourage people to continue giving at various life stages? So let's look at the youth first. And we're calling them Generation Gusto because of the passion that they have. So you see here, for example, in the slide of demographics, so a quarter of Singapore population right now are making up of youth, and they are increasingly well educated, mostly have degrees or diplomas, fairly happy, satisfied with life, confident in the future, civic minded, uh, and they're active in the community. They are, however, a bit worried about the studies, not being in Singapore exams, everyone's like, I mean, I have a niece who is in Nanyang Primary, and she's like, we're 10 years to use with you, right? So <laughs> it's this kind of pressure that, that the kids are facing. So, and they also consider about growing up. What does it mean to grow up in Singapore? The future, what it holds for. So, in a recent study by NYC National Youth Council, they actually did a study about the goals, life goals of youth right now. Uh, it's very interesting to see that actually they're still very pragmatic and they're still acting the same, saying the same sentence. So, what we notice is that, for example, strong family ties, uh, having a place of their own, having new skills, successful career, and lots of money. Those are important for them. But the good news is that they still want to contribute to society and they still want to help. Uh, the lives of the less fortunate. So that's good uh, news, uh, that's actually good for, for Singapore. In terms of the desires, uh, you can see people keep telling us this message. When we talk to them in, in our know, interviews, they can think that they want to live life according to their own terms, right? It's my life, my way. They really don't like to regulate. They like freedom, they like autonomy. Uh, they, like, they really have the entrepreneurial spirit. And they all they want us to pursue more challenges and take risks. At the same time, they do want to be taken seriously and they care about others think, right? So it's important to hear what they're saying. Um, and underlying that is really about the need to be useful and the need to be socially belonging to a group of people that share the same interests. Okay. So giving to youth is really a uh, youth is really a positive rebellion, that's what we call it. So in this uh, line chart here, uh, what you see is that for example in a dotted line. Uh, youth, like we said, are really enthusiastic givers. So in the doctor what we notice is that school age youth are really uh, contributing a lot more in terms of volunteer uh volunteers in range. It's forty one percent compared to the national average of thirty five percent. 
and they actually do volunteer, however they do volunteer less regularly because of activities, multiple activities they have in school and in short hours. So right now the youth volunteer have about 71 hours a year and 26% of them are actually regular volunteers. And they do have a big dreams of giving. Right? So when we talk to the youth, they keep telling us big words that you want to see the impact of the volunteering. They want to know how the how volunteering can spread to others and be my role. Right? And they, they, at this age right now, they've been thinking about giving is a legacy for me. How do I make a legacy? Do we want to have a lasting impression after I leave this world? So let's hear from this interesting uh, lady. Uh, she's uh, she's Google, she's a polytechnic student here in Poly. Let's hear what she say about giving. You're a huge volunteer. The main thing I always have trouble with is the adults. The adults are really adults we use it to us. I know you want to volunteer, but we kind of own this place, so you use it to us. And I'm like, we here because we want to do something good, and they stop us from a lot of things, and our enthusiasm just lies down to me. Yeah, we don't know anything about what they work, but we know that they're going to come. You know, but they open to them. I went back from being oppressed by the adults to going overseas to build a school in three years. So at last night of Vietnam, I sat down and I had like, oh, I'm going to go and play, you know, like, I remember the time I said, you know, we're not seeing more. And I'm like, I did this far. And the people that said I couldn't do it. One year later, I went to Vietnam, you know, it made me feel like, yes, yeah, my motivation is to play now, it's very crazy. Yeah, that's good for you. And however, volunteerism rate actually does drop, like I mentioned earlier, uh, once, they re once they actually reach the working adult line. Right? So, in, the, in this chart, you notice that the dotted blue line is those young working adults, right, 25 to 34. The volunteerism rate, the last IGS rate, is 29%, uh, compared to the national average of 25%. So, like I mentioned, uh, life priorities do change. Uh, people take a different stand, different view on you know, what's, what's important to me right now. So, let's hear what this person has to say. This basically means that ad hoc help, whenever it's needed, they can change up and support. Uh, and then the 20% want to start to grow up, as well as the 20% who actually wants to do uh, online crowdfunding campaign. So you can see the activities are both offline and online for this uh, generation of youth. Uh, so, what can we do? What else can we do for them? We need to give youth autonomy, right? Validation and career development opportunities. So often people support through the rebellion. So because we know that much people right? We want to give them creative spaces where they can explore what other initiatives. So, so, so start their own uh, giving uh, program. We want to give them guidance, resources, knowledge, uh, and connections to build that uh, the dream of theirs. We want to seek their opinion as well, right, on national issues. Because uh, like I said, before, they want to be seen and they want to be heard about what they get supposed to do. So involve them in national issues, involve them in decision making as well as in knowledge and concerns. Career building is important for them. So how do we make them learn about building courage for giving, right? 
Uh, you'll see as well can give them skills such as uh, leadership, project management, communication, that you can use to the resume. And lastly, give them a sense of belonging, right? Because these youth they want social uh, connectedness most important in the world. Uh, they also want a group of people who share the same interests, values, and experiences with them, and they also find safety in being in a group. So a good case study of this is the City YMCA Group of Causes uh, program, which has currently dispersed $160,000 seed fund each year to more than 1,300 teens of youth since 2003. Now, it's a good example of how corporates actually have galvanized you to generate social impact with BWOs by fueling their entrepreneurial spirit and creativity. Now, in the process, they've actually grown to next generation of community leaders. So that's a really great collaboration effort. So moving on next, we'll come to midlifers, and um, I'm, a, I'm a midlifer, so I can speak from experience. <laughs> so uh, these are really the generation stretch, right? For those of you in this group, I think you are going to resonate some from what I'm saying next. Uh, so they are currently about a quarter of them in Singapore are midlifers. Uh, most are working and have a household, and most actually are caregivers in a sense, right? Because they have parents to take after, they have in-laws to look after, uh, they have children to look after, right? So. Um, for the work side, personal side, really stretch. Uh, top concerns are really cost of living and, and security, job security. They have fear of retrenchment, um, especially those in their forties. I think there's a lot of stories circulating about how they lose their jobs in banks and they are being like grab drivers. So people you nearly know, these kind of stories that actually do um, add to more fear and anxiety in people. Well as well as a fear of losing jobs from technology and automation as well. So in terms of desires, what we notice the most important for them is that for midlifers. Their human desires are really centered around family and seeking meaning and purpose. So they've done the whole corporate ladder planning phase, and now they are taking stock of what's really important for them and recalibrating how they want to build the balance of half of their lives. Right? So this is the human desires. So in a sense, giving is a jumping act for me like this. Uh, what we notice in the voyages and rates is that the bit like first currently. But make no mistake first of all, they actually are active and engaged givers uh, with a voluntarism rate of 43% and a national average of 35%. Also, the majority is the boss there. Actually, I think 15% said they're willing to, uh, likely to volunteer in the future. Having said that, they are volunteering less intensively. So, right now, for the middle is about 62 hours uh, compared to national average of 84, and about 34%, one third of them, are considered as regular volunteers. Now, social needs are important with midlifers, and more than, a, more than a third volunteer with their family, followed by friends and colleagues. The majority like to give direct to the community, followed by religious groups and employers. And for those, actually, it's also, you know, for those interview, we spoke to some of the respondents as well, and they mentioned that, you know, when they, if they have kids, it's really about cultivating the right giving values to them, uh, from one generation to the next. So, they want to sow the seeds of compassion in their children and make them aware of the less fortunate. So like I said, time is a crucial factor. So let's watch a video about the opportunity costs that we have in space.
So the question really is, how do we facilitate, provide work-life life balance for our lifers? So I'd like to make a few suggestions here. Uh, it's really about making giving for a good to like really stretch lives. Now this is not meant to trivialize giving, but, it's, but we know accept that giving can be front and center with this group of segments, with this group of midlifers. Right? So we need it easy and accessible. So the first thing is really about institutionalized giving to corporate policy, or providing some with volunteer leave, or flexible work policies. Now this will allow midlife midlifers uh, to leave for a couple of hours, and maybe a day or two, uh, to volunteer and return to complete their work. Oops, sorry. Second point is about making it convenient. Now, volunteer opportunities should just be flexible and convenient. One way to encourage new lifers is to volunteer in places that are near their homes or near their workplaces. Also, think about new lifers with professional skills such as marketing, HR, consulting. How can they perhaps contribute their talent to non profit street working hours? Thirdly, because we know that social desires are important, let's consider involving their family and friends. This allows them to spend time with their loved ones as well as an opportunity to give back. Last thing, as I mentioned earlier, their lifers are reprioritizing pre pre their life choices, so it's important that every giving initiative has a purpose of giving. So, a good case study of this is Green Pack. Now, Green Pack is your point for me, young. It's a local SME whose CSR initiative reaches out to diverse groups, going beyond providing donations to include imparting important practices about sustainability and environment. Now, they have a robust CHL system framework with KPIs and staff upgrades and recognized for when they achieve these KPIs. Volunteering is also part of the culture here in this company. Let's move on to the last life stage, uh, the seniors. We're going to call them here the lead generation, and I'll tell you why in a bit. So, seniors in Singapore are living and working longer. Uh, Currently, about one in four will be 65 by 2030, right? and they make up about a third of the population. Most are delaying most are delaying with uh, their the retirement, um, and majority are uh, having still going to go about work because for economic and social reasons. And uh, they have actually uh, majority are still blue collar workers with secondary and middle education. This is the current statement in Singapore. In terms of desires. Uh, as mentioned earlier, this generation is facing a dwindling of human desires. Now, they are institution uh, choosing to be isolated at home and with, with not much desire for change or challenge. They are also technology in this universe. Well, I don't know about you, but I think it's time to restart that part, right? I think what we need to restart the heart and passion of our dear seniors and let them know that they are still useful and can contribute meaningfully to society. Unfortunately, we see the rise of new senior segments coming to Singapore. Uh, we have two of them. First is the white collar seniors. Now, they're typically in their early 50s, still working, drawing a pretty decent salary, and mostly professionals, managers, uh, PMTs. And the other segments are the couple of retirees who are retired, really, and they're 60 plus and above, and they, like, they live in HDB, four or five flats. Now, interestingly, these seniors actually have much more potential than their previous cohorts. So they see themselves as successful because, uh, especially for college day, because it's not really feel these things feel of stress, uh, and they don't really care about this thing. I mean, we all know seniors who are very opinionated and sometimes just say what they want to say. Uh, same time, we come from retirees. Uh, you know, they they feel that even though they're not working right now, they feel they can't, can't change much of their life. They do not feel pressure and prefer to stay at home. And what's common about both uh, segments that they're very frugal in terms of their living. So giving here is really a new lease of life for seniors. So in terms of volunteerism rate, seniors actually have relatively low but growing volunteerism rate. Right now it stands about 29% compared to national average of 35. But having said that, seniors are very engaged and committed givers. So when you look at the hours they spend, 135 hours per year compared to national average of 84. Uh, so about half of them are considered as regular volunteers to do it on a weekly and monthly basis. Now, while most prefer to give a loan, many seniors actually do see see giving as a social activity. And uh, we see like 40% of seniors who want to volunteer if their employers were to organize volunteer activities. Uh, in terms of the 
quotes we got from uh, the, the interviews we did. So we noticed that students actually have a nurturing heart, and they really feel empowered to help others. Like Nancy Ellis, the first uh, lady you see there on the right, uh, she's actually the first uh, female popular in Singapore we spoke to her. Uh, and she talked about, you know, I want to take part, she's really passionate about saving the environment and recycling, and she wants to teach others how to do it. At the same time, we hear uh, quotes like, you want to help the person to be a better person, and you want to do little things to make uh, people happy in general. So let's hear what some seniors have to say about gratitude and Thanksgiving. If it has given me a preference, but personally for me, I have, I have been um, uh, a huge sense of satisfaction. But uh, as I said, I need to do more. The more you give, the more access I bring to you. When I leave this world, I have to make sure that I have something to bring along. What I bring along into the next world is not the material, but whatever good deeds that I have done for them to live is an opportunity for me open to me to render such deeds. When I acquire that knowledge, so it is good for me to share with other people. So by doing so, I am not only uh, being, trying to myself to be healthy, but I am also helping other people to be healthy. So, so sharing of such a, uh, a knowledge is good for me and it's good for others. It's such a good thing, isn't it? So, so how do we actually give seniors a new means of life? I have some suggestions for you today. Uh, but first of all, is we want to make five help seniors find meaning through an uncle career, where they can perhaps start a new job, a non-profit, give them the rich experience, knowledge, skills, and connection they have. Secondly, corporates can also tap on their wisdom by getting into better use of organization. Now this could be giving or giving on other organization projects and its perfect marriage of the youth's enthusiasm as well as the senior guidance. Thirdly, let's help seniors build relationships uh, and getting them, getting them out of their self and those exile. We know they value relationships with their loved ones, but this will also extend to building friendships with beneficiaries, volunteers, and corporate staff. Lastly, we know that seniors are frugal and without income. How about reimbursing them for transport meals or even small allowance to help them ease the barrier to giving? Now, a good case study of this is RSVP. Uh, so last year, we saw this on the video. Now, this NPO this recently launched an initiative called Entire with Purpose uh, to encourage more senior employees to serve the community. Now, the idea is for older employees to partner with RSVP Singapore for volunteer opportunities with various organizations through their companies. Now, over a five month period, employees are interested in retirement planning and in supporting COVID courses will be introduced to a structured volunteer journey based on their interests, time commitment, and goals. So in conclusion, you know, I'm standing between you and lunch. Uh, so really, it's um, like my message at the very beginning. We need to first of all see givers as people first, right? Uh, and whose desires change across different life stages. So how do we uh, use giving as a means to ease the tension or to support their passions uh, in different life stages? I think that's the message I'm giving you today. So with this, I hope that uh, this has somewhat inspired you to uh, engage in different life stage segments. And I'll still see you together. Thank you.